philosophy of judging. Basically, knowledge of the rules, integrity, judgment, creating trust, being cooperative, your reaction, stay calm, and fulfillment of duties, we will go to it one by one. But I would come in to summarize the philosophy, philosophy of judging in two parts. One is being fair to all archers. And second one is protecting the score of the archers. We are not here as policemen to, be, to take away the scores. We are here to give trust to the archers that we are here to protect your scores. And we want it to be fair. If there is a world ranking event, if somebody is going to make a world record in um, Africa, we want the conditions to be the same as what it was in America. That's what we are here as judges. So knowledge of the rules. Read the rules often. Do not be shy to ask questions if you do not understand something. I became international judge in 2007. I've been to many, many championships. Still, I ask a lot of my questions from my friend Indranil. I think that every time I call him and text him, he says, oh no, this guy again. I am going to, if he doesn't answer me, I'm going to go to somebody else. Do not be shy that you ask a question, people might say, oh, he doesn't know this. You have to read the rules. And also the rules get updated. You have to be updated with the bylaws, with the newsletters, with the interpretations. So uh, we have to be up to date. It is very bad when you go to a competition and you do something that is not new, you don't gain that trust. That archer is not going to ask you. He's going to say, wait, let me ask another judge. So you have to be up to date. And today, everything is on the internet. And um, I want to tell you, there is nothing to write here. This whole thing is being recorded, so you can have it. And you can take whatever you want. But, uh, it's easy to get access. And we have the Google Translate, even some people of you. There is no excuse for you not to be updated. You have no excuse today. Maybe in our time, we have the books. I still carry the books in the plane with me. But the thing is, when you read the book, you have to know roughly where it is. So in the middle of a competition, if you want to come back and see a question on ties, you have to know where you're looking for. So you don't need to look in a field championship for the ties for the outdoor. So you have to know where things are. Obviously, remember the important rules that you use commonly. We have a judge guidebook. I hope you're all aware that the pages of the judge guidebook is more than the pages of our rules. And it shows you how actually to handle it practically. So please have a look at that. And it is hopefully going to be updated, my friend, the judge guidebook, Indranil. Is it going to be updated, the judge guidebook, soon? Hope. So it's basically, inshallah. <laughs> but that is a very good book. So you remember how to go for that. OK. Knowing the intention of a rule, if you as judges know why the rule is there, you can answer many of the questions. It's not just memorizing it. Okay, you memorize that 
Recurve is shot on a 70 meter. Why compound is on a 50 meter? You have to know why some rules are there in terms of safety. So when we say that we are not going to accept a site with a long cover on it, or with a, my friends will come with a big uh, fiber, so that when you are pulling your bow, and if there is something, you cannot see the field at the end for safety, they are not going to allow that, that you might hit somebody else. So the rule is there for safety. This is just a, a, a question to know. The rule is sometimes there for time advantage. So we want to be fair. When on a team event, when you say that on a compound, you can only hook the release on the shooting line, if you hook it before, you have a time advantage. It is not fair. This is the intention of a rule. Protecting the rights of all and also firmly applying the rules. This means that sometimes you have to take away the scores of some arches to be able to protect the other archers' right. So you must do it firmly. When it says firmly, you must do it firmly. And we want to have your independent behavior. So do not compromise your integrity by accepting orders from outsiders. This means, I give you an example. I was uh, a line judge in World Championship in Turin. And our chairman of the World Archery Judge Committee, Mr. Sergio Font, was our chairman. And there was a archer from the Americas, his part of the world. They were shooting on a final with somebody from Korea, if I'm not mistaken. So we have the announcer saying, you know, it's the last arrow, and yes, he takes the gold medal. Still, and it's or he says, it's a 9 or a 10, but I think it's a 10. It looks like a 10, and he taken the gold medal. You must not allow his word to go through your mind. So this was so close that in the target, the agent goes Yay! to try and work on the judge's target judge that we are up. It was so close that on the line, the coaches and the judges, they shook hands. You know, when it finishes, they shake hands. Yes, say congratulations. Then suddenly I looked and see the clock is turning green. So the target judge called that a nine because he did it his way. So he said, we have another round to go. So obviously our chairman was not so pleased, but this is an example. You must do what you have to do. You do your own work. You don't care if this guy is from this country or it makes no difference. You do your thing. Fair treatment for everybody. This is, as I said, you have your club people, you have your countrymen. If you have your countrymen in World Archery Tournaments, you don't judge, you don't read their values. And if you have a problem, you ask your neighboring. But I want to tell you again, in a, yes? The judge doesn't do anything, the judge does his own thing. The judge makes the number and the scoring team says we have another match to go. So you I say you must not get distracted from the things they tell you. Now I tell you a memory from um, Copenhagen World Championship where I was a judge and it was a final and a very nice team and we have a, a very good archer from USA called Rio Wild. 
and he was just doing 10, 10, 10, 10, and the crowd was very happy, and I was on target, and maybe in the last end, he shot a nine. Nine on a borderline bit, and all the crowd went, oh. <laughs> so when I went to read it, the general uh, feeling wants say, let's, I want to help this guy have all tens. No, you don't do that. You do what you have to do. My colleagues will cover this very deeply. This is just the, the, the integrity. So, on the judgment point, the protective attitude. We have the benefit of doubt that we use a lot. So, I'm just going to tell you how fair this is with an example. That when the archer is shooting, on the last second, beep. So, you are a line judge close to them. If you are not sure, you give benefit of the doubt. This is how fair we come to philosophy of judging. Or, if you are on the three meter line, if, you're on the, if somebody, an archer, throws the arrow and is not very sure if it's inside three meter or outside three meter, to be fair, as judges, we must consider the archer's height. So if the archer is a tall guy, and I am a short judge, I must see what he saw. So this means being fair. Okay? And you are talking about hearsay. Whenever in a competition somebody comes and tells you this happened, you must rely on facts, not on what people tell you. Your colleague is a different case. So if they tell you, for example, that uh, my space is a little, I want to shoot, and this guy is coming from his space, you must make sure, you don't listen to him. After they shot, you go and measure, you see if the space is okay, then you make action. So you must not just hear what people tell you. It's like a football match where everybody knows, say, oh, he touched his hand, a lot of people come to you, blah, blah. No, no, it's not like that. You make the decision on facts, okay? Okay, creating trust. You create trust, you have to earn that trust. Some of our colleagues here have done maybe 20, 25 world ranking events. They have earned that trust. How would you do knowledge, determination, clear information, and consistency? All these four meaning that you know your stuff, you know the rules, you know how to apply it. And being a judge is not, you have to be a judge. I made a mistake in a world, in an Asian championship. Uh, I don't know if I should say this, but this is the truth. In Xi'an, in China, I don't know, 2007 or something. And my mistake gave the medal that was supposed to go to Malaysia. If I'm not mistaken, it went to Singapore. Everybody makes mistakes. But championships is not a place to make mistakes. Um, I must tell you this, I was very young, um, I actually cried because I remember a very young 
person in the, Nash, in the Malaysian team, he was a junior guy. And I thought to myself, why this must happen? Since then, I read the rules all the time. On the plane, I read the books. I read, I read, I ask questions. This is how you learn. And sometimes my English wasn't as good as now. I, I, I study. I don't get shy. If you're shy, you're no good for this. You have to be firm. If you're shy, you want to show a yellow card and you are not sure, and you know, it, 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 you are not good here. And the media people are here to make our sport look good, make our sport look big. So we have to give assistance, we have to be polite. Reaction. This is the main thing that we expect from judges. That if something happens, what is your reaction? And your reaction, is it going to be, it's going to be firm? Is it going to be slow? Sometimes you have time to confer with your chairman of judges. But I say this. When shit happens, my friends, it happens and everybody, I don't know what it is, especially, especially, unfortunately, unfortunately in Asia, we just look at each other and the thing is going on. You know, we, we had a few cases this year in our Asia Cups. We had problems and Everybody is just waiting for the chairman to come like a superman and save everybody. It is not like that. It is when some problem happens, first you have to think. You have to be sharp. And I'm very sorry to say it. You have to move your bottom. You have to move. You can't sit down and order it. If you see the archer has two seconds left, you cannot be sitting on, on your chair and say, oh, no. it, it is not like that. You have to stand up, you have to stay behind, it means you have to move, and you have to look at the release. If the guy is a right-handed release, and you have time, you have to move behind and come and see it. This is your job, you're there to protect the score of the archer. So you have to move. Avoid delay of the competition. I see in some very important competitions when we also have uh, TV coverage, you see a judge comes and says, maybe in the last end, uh, we have like 50 targets and see somebody is waiting at the end. Uh, I want to change the target face for this one. And when you look at it, the lines are there. There is no need to hold up the, t because when you do that, the archer, archer says, can you change mine? Can you change? This is going to prolong it. Let the rhythm go. Okay? Reply to the questions is when somebody asks you a question, you specifically answer to their, their question, not something else. Now, these two are very important. To me, judging is this reaction. Keep alert and focused throughout the competition, especially during the team match, and keep an open mind at all times. I'm going to give you two examples. Okay. Um, you must, when you're on the line, you must think what is going to happen. What, and you must think negative. What's going to happen if the time goes out? What's going to happen in this stage? You must not, when you're doing individual, you must not think about the team event. When you're doing a team, you have to look at the point of the arrow, you have to look at the foot, you have to look at the clicker, you have to look at the time, you have to look at the uniform, you have to look at the coach not coming out. So you must be focused on what you're doing. 
And if you, if you can see what can happen wrong, even a night before, then you can make a good reaction. Controlling your emotions, necessary time to appropriate, smile and relax. Okay, when you are in a, doing a match and if somebody wins, you must not show that, ah, oh, he won, yes. Because the other archer thinks that this is not so very fair. You must control, your, you must control it. And you must smile, especially when you are on the line when you're in the uh, final matches, I see some are, you know, we don't want to fight. We are here to smile. You should first. You should second. You have to give that positive energy. Of course, not when you're going to read the arrow value, it's a 9 or a 10. Then you give a lower one, then you don't smile. You don't say 9. <laughs> you don't do that. You understand? So you have to know when to smile. Um, my colleagues are going to go through other topics. These guys are top instructors. They know what they're doing. I want you to use it. I want you to be awake. Um, what I covered was just a general topic. M my friends are going to go to detail. And you can ask your questions in detail. I want you to go from Sharjah with a high level of judging. But what I want you to do from the chairman of this committee is English, English, and English. You must not be shy. And when you're in an international tournament, somebody like Brady Allison comes to you and he wants to challenge you. If you cannot speak English, you are giving the person permission to challenge you. And he has the right. The archer has the right to ask a question. You must be able to answer. You must convince him. You must give him that trust. So, and in matches, <coughs> If you are awake, if you can see what is going to happen next, you have less problems. You ask questions. 